Yeah, but we know that already. Um, first and foremost, hello. Most for most of you, nice to see you again. <laughs> Some of you respected, obviously, the um, that hairdressers are not allowed uh, to work in the moment. Um, yes, we know for a while already that we uh, have no support. So it's I, I answer that question pretty much every day, but it can I, my my answer can, cannot change. Um, it's all different. It's all different, but. We cannot change that, so we have to use the circumstances, not suffer from that. That means there's a game uh, between Everton and Liverpool, which is still a derby um, and important for both teams for different reasons, and uh, that's what we are looking forward to. That the that the circumstances um, are like they are. We try to get used to during the during the training period now in the last four weeks roundabout, um, with playing one proper. Um, test game against um, Blackburn and two internal. Um, so, and it looked like football. It looked like football, what we did there. And uh, that's very important. Um, and when we all started playing football, it was without crowd. Um, when we play today football, if I play from time to time, not really often, it's without crowd. I still want to win. So, um, and that's, uh, that's exactly how it is. So it's not a perfect situation, but it's as good as possible. And so that's what we are preparing for. And. I, I will not miss it during the game because I know already that it's not there, but I'm really looking forward to it when the crowd will be back, I can tell you. Jürgen, as well, throughout lockdown, we've seen examples of football being used as a force for good. I'm thinking of Jordan Henderson and organising donations from players to the NHS. Uh, but also, what do you make of the way footballers have been using their status to affect social change? Uh, the reinforcing of the Black Lives Matter message, and Marcus Rashford, of course, forcing the government into a U-turn over free school meals for kids. You try to be smart, yeah. You put three mess, three questions in, in one, pretty much. Um, I don't think it makes sense to to mix that all up because it's all for it's all very very important and um, for different reasons. So what? Let's start maybe um, with the first one. Uh, what Hendo and the players did um, during the lockdown. I'm proud of the players, but I'm not surprised because um, I know that the players do a lot of a lot of things uh, without really talking about it. Um, that's what makes me proud. Um, so I was not surprised that the players will be immediately ready to help um, in in this difficult time. Um, but then uh, what Marcus Rashford did, I couldn't respect it more. It's unbelievable. It's a little bit of a shame that he had to do it, but um, because things like this should be should be yeah just natural um but he, there was a there was something to do and he did the job in an incredible manner what he did during the lockdown was absolutely fantastic um and yeah black lives matter so um that's another thing which um i hope in this case especially in this case it's the last time that we have to to make sure that everybody hears and sees that because it's too long um that we already um yeah deal with these kind of things for reasons I really don't understand. If football is a role model for anything in life, then it's for that, for equality, that everybody is exactly the same. Wherever you come from, wherever you um, are from, absolutely the same. It's all about who you are, not which color you have or whatever, or which haircut or whatever. I know from my point of view, it's easy to say that, but it's not uh, It's not easy for me. Well, people may think it's easy for, to say that, but it's not easy. It's just for us in football, completely natural. And that's how it should be everywhere. Judge people um, only because of who they are and not any other things. I, it's so dumb. It's so unbelievable dumb to not doing it like this, that it's really hard for me to, to even tr understand it a little bit why it could be like this, but it is like this. And so we have to stand up. We have to, or we have to kneel, uh, whatever we have to do, we have to do and we will do 100% just to sort this situation for now and for the future, because then the past we cannot change, but the future we can change. And that's what we all should try. And just finally for me, Jürgen, obviously the links with Timo Werner throughout this period, it seemed to jump from having no plans to sign him to a telephone conversation with the player to pulling out of the race to sign him. Can you clarify what went on as regards any pursuit for Timo Werner? That's not really funny. We don't speak about transfers. We potentially do. And now I would speak about the transfer of Chelsea. Funny. Why should I do that? <laughs> absolutely nothing to say about Timo Werner is a really good football player and 
place, how I've heard now, is it true? Um, I think yesterday he announced it for Chelsea next season. That's it. Right, thank you, Vinny. Uh, Krabbers, are you okay to unmute yourself? And then yeah, we'll go. hello. You're on. Two hello, questions. Jürgen. Happy belated birthday for, for Wednesday from everyone. Um, I read on the club's website you're being asked about Everton's form going into this Mersey site derby, but um, in comparison to your own form at Liverpool, the last six matches weren't great. I think you lost four of the last six. So, how confident are you of getting your own form back and how important is it going past that six points when you've secured the title to keep that going and, and whether records are or aren't important? Oh, thank you for reminding me. I didn't know that actually. Um, but um, so we didn't speak about it one time during our preseason here now um, because it's not about that. Uh, if you are not, if you don't have the results, um, you want to have, there are plenty of reasons usually for it. And um, the intensity of a season is always one one part of it. So we don't use the form of Everton, which they had before the uh, lockdown and our, our our shape in that moment had no influence really. I know that a lot of people um, said uh, the, the Atletico game and we lost it obviously, but from a performance point of view, I was really happy with that game, to be honest. We, we, we showed a lot of these situations, not that we didn't score goals or that we conceded goals, but in between these two big moments, there was a lot we can, we can use for the rest of the season because it was really good against the top uh, top side. Um, so it's not important what I lost before. It's like you would ask me uh, when we start uh, the new season then about a game I had uh, against the team the November before. So it's just not important. It's all about now. It's all about you know, the momentum and where we are in. And we, we try to make sure that we're in as good a shape as possible. And one thing for sure changed. It was our our last four weeks were not as intense as the 10 weeks or 12 weeks before lockdown, which were the most intense in our lives, probably from a football point of view. And um, so the boys were arrested when they arrived here. They had a lot of things to do during lockdown, training wise and all the things that's clear, but getting used to football is something different. So we had a lot of things to do now in the last four weeks. We did that and we are in the best possible shape. We don't know. That's probably not our 100%. I don't know. But for Everton, they had the same time, not more, not less. They had the same time. So nothing to do with shape or whatever. It's all about um, being ready for facing problems in a football game, finding solutions. My job is to prepare as many solutions as possible. And like always, the players have to pick them um, in the best way, instinctively. That would be great. Then we will, we will have a good game. Um, and Everton is, will be highly motivated. Um, and, uh, starting with a derby in a normal season already would be would be really interesting. And now it's our short season and it's it's very interesting. So just it's um, it's a special game for, for different reasons. And um, we try to do our best and then we see what we get for it. And if we're trying to get things back to anywhere near normal, I suppose I'll have to ask you a, a team and injury question as normal from a press conference. So how's Mo Salah, how's Andy Robertson? And given that Alisson didn't play the last few matches before everything stopped, should we assume he'll be back in or is that too much to do? Uh, they, they, they look all good. They look all good. We had, of course, in during the lockdown, some eh, during the lockdown, during the, the train, train period now, um, um, yeah, some little problems. That's completely normal, how we always have it. But um, none of them is ruled out for Sunday, I can say. Okay, thank, thank you. you. If you can put yourself on mute and we go to Juliet, as we would in normal order, if you could unmute yourself, Juliet, and one or two questions, hopefully, uh, hopefully one. Uh, it will be one. Um, Jürgen, you mentioned then about being in the best possible shape and, and you know, having that momentum. How, how much match fitness and rhythm can players lose during a break like this? Well, probably we'll never experience a break like this again, but in terms of pre-season, it's, it's longer than pre-season, isn't it? Yeah, so in nine weeks without doing anything, you can lose pretty much everything. You only have to try it by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> when you are good in something and then you don't do it for nine weeks or do nothing for nine weeks, that, that looks different afterwards. Um, but um, the players trained every day. So um, that's not, it's not about that. But you don't train them for a specific moment in this period because we had never an idea until maybe a week before we were allowed to start again with training. We didn't know at all when we will start again. That made it quite tricky because you cannot, training is completely different if you just want to keep fit or if you want to be in your best shape on a specific on a specific day. 
So that's just sports science and nothing else. And we were, we kept them fit until we knew now we will go again. So, and that's how I said was probably around about a week before uh, we, we started then with training out there on the pitch. Um, so you can lose a lot, but the boys don't lose a lot. The, in, we have a problem, so fitness-wise. In, in football, we have the problem that's unfolding. Unfortunately, it's not like riding a bike. Well, we say in German, you never lose it. Or, um, because you you can it once and you will be able to, to ride a bike until you um, until your last day in life. Um, that's not with football because we have to bring 11 or more players together the same, having the same idea in the same moment. And these kind of things, of course, you have to train. You have to train that even in the normal week. If we play Sunday, Sunday or Saturday, Saturday, you have to train it. And that's what we do. And you have to train it even more so when we after a longer break. And that's what we were working on. But it looked really, it looked really good. A lot of things were still there, but timing and stuff like this that always needs to be adjusted, and that's what we did. So I expect us to be in a good shape. Honestly, we will see um, how good it is. Um, but I don't know um, exactly, and I expect to be, and that's what I always do. Everton in a very good shape, and um, so it will be difficult for us. But rightly so. It's Premier League. We didn't play for a while, so um, we should. Um, try to sort the problems um, in this game and we should give them some as well and then we will see. Okay, thank you uh, Jules, if you could go back on to mute. Uh, Mike Hughes, who seems to have the best setup of everybody on his, uh, on his system there. Wonderful microphone headphones. Mike, if you can unmute yourself, if not I can. There you go Mike, two questions please. Yeah, uh, hi Jürgen. Um, just in terms of, we know this is uncharted territory over the past sort of three months, how impressed have you been with the players' attitude, obviously, since you've been back in training and then it was non-contact training initially and then contact training. But even before that, we've seen a lot of social media films and different bits and pieces. How impressed have you been by the togetherness? Because it seems to be something pretty special amongst this group. First of all, I would, I would guess, though, I'd estimate that other teams did things as well. I don't know exactly, to be honest, I don't watch that, but um, I, I'm not surprised um, by my team, to be honest, because that we, that we are in the situation we are in, in the table or performance-wise in the last couple of years is only because of the boys and the, the, the togetherness of the group and the character of the individuals. That's, that's how it is, so I'm not surprised about that. Um, it was just like it always was. The boys wanted to, wanted, we, don't, we didn't have to tell them to stay in contact. They wanted to stay in contact. That's a massive difference. And um, we organized it a little bit with some things and um, the, we, we gave them some opportunities to be together, the training sessions especially. The boys did a lot of yoga. <laughs> um, Zoom sessions were a lot of times yoga um, and, and all these things. So that was all absolutely nice. It was good for the mood. You could see um, when we met first time on Zoom um, after a week or so, I'm not 100% sure. Then you could really see everybody was like, oh, Finally, I see him again, him again, him again. And um, so that, that all helps. And that's what we wanted to do. And on the Friday before lockdown, I told the boys we will create a, a WhatsApp group, um, a chat group. And um, I want really everybody to, to use it just as an as opportunity for us because boys write with each other and stuff like this. But there's no, there are no secrets. There are no secrets if we, if we write to each other. It's for all of us. And um, that's what we did. And it was really lively over the whole time. So yes, I was really, I was really happy about what they did during. And now, um, since we are back, look, if you're, if you're a little bit silly, you, 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 you can come in here every day and think, wow, that was better before when we could use our canteen, when we could use this, when we could use that. But now it's all different. It's, it's exciting if you want to see it like this. It's like a little bit adventurous as well. So I, I, I would have never thought that, I, that we go back to, to having the, the gym in a tent to be honest, um, but how our people organized it, how, what Ray Huffen did was incredible, what, what Andreas Kornmeier did with, uh, from a fitness point of view it was incredible, what Mona Nemer did from a nutrition point of view was incredible during the lockdown, but now as well, because the situation is like it is. Eh? We, we, we cannot just go out and, and, and for, for grocery shopping, we should be able to, but in a, in a situation like this, it, it's not easy to do these kind of things when, when everybody tells you, you have to be safe. For us, it would be a, a, a massive problem if one of our boys get infected. So, and that stays like this. So we have to make sure that we can, can really keep them in a safe place as, as much as possible. And that's what we did. 
and the boys let it happen. That's how it is. The boys use it without thinking, without taking it for granted. And that shows again the character of the team. But again, I am not surprised because um, I know how blessed I am with this group. All Premier League games are, are pretty intense. Uh, derby matches in particular, Merseyside derbies are, are pretty frenetic affairs on, on occasions. The intensity levels are, are, are ratcheted up even further. Um, do you think it will be the same on Sunday? Do you expect the same sort of, you know, levels of intensity given obviously, you know, neither side have got the fitness levels that they had previously. So how will that sort of affect the tempo of the game, do you think? We will see. So I'm, I'm actually a pretty experienced manager, but I have not a lot of experience with games behind closed doors and stuff like this. So I don't know exactly. Um, I'm from, I had a lot of preseasons in my life as a player and as a manager. Some preseasons, the, the first game was exceptionally intense, and some others, or well, after some preseasons, the first game was exceptional. Some other, after some other preseason was not that. I don't know. When I when I saw now the, the, the first two games in the Premier League, that looked absolutely, they looked all in a good shape. The intensity was was good. We will maybe judge it then um, um, and a little bit differently because we have now we can really focus on the game. And sometimes when you watch a game on television and the camera goes to the crowd or whatever, and then you see not how the players in this moment, how hard they are breathing or think, things like this. We will see that now all, but I don't think the intensity will be absolutely okay. I watched a lot of Bundesliga games, obviously. And um, especially in the beginning, the intensity was really there, 100%. And then it became a bit tricky for all the teams because of the number of games we have in a really short period. Because we don't have only a long break and a short preseason. We have now a lot of games in a pretty short period of time. But that's the challenge for all of us. I mean, how that will um, influence the intensity, I don't know in this moment. We will not go for excuses. We hopefully don't have to. Um, as well, so um, we will see, but it will be 100% really, really tough for all of us. So everybody's playing. So, so many things um, have to be decided in this league. Yeah, the um, championship, of course, then Champions League, of course, European League, of course, and then pretty much not the rest, but a lot of teams um, are involved in um, in the, in the fight for staying in the league and all this stuff. So that will be that uh, that will make the intensity, even if you feel tired. There's no chance to, 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 to suffer. You have to go through, and that's for all of us the same. And um, yeah, but that makes the, the competition um, so exciting that um, there's really something to go for. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Mike. Um, I think we go now to Carl Markham. Um, Carl, if you can unmute yourself, it's typical we can't. Ah, oh, there you are. Yes. Hello. Hi again. Hello. For the left of the video. Fire away, Carl. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Just just following on from that, I just wonder how much how much you're concerned by the potential injuries which which could affect the team with with this comeback and and the and the obviously we've seen from other games that have been played. Yeah, concerned, like I always am. Not different. Um, I'm always concerned about injury because that's the thing you want to avoid. You want to have um, all the players fit and available. You want to have the choice. You want to have the, the situation that you have to make difficult decisions and stuff like this. Um, but we try to make sure that the boys are as fit as possible. So if if I would, would have thought it's no chance that we can, after four weeks, we play we play the season or what the rest of the season, I would have said it. So I'm not. That doesn't mean it cannot nothing can happen. But for example, the injuries from Arsenal and from, from Garcia, from City, they had nothing to do with the um, with the short preseason or, or anything else. These are the things they can happen always. It's a contact sport. Um, you don't want to have this, but it can happen. And um, so, yes, I'm concerned, but not um, in, a, in a manner that I think um, it should be should not play. No, not at all. I, I think we had four weeks, and we had nine, nine or ten weeks. I don't know exactly how long um, our lockdown, our lockdown without training was. Um, we had the boys trained there, so we didn't, they were not sitting on a chair for nine weeks and then we trained with them again for four weeks, so they were really active, they had to be active, that's uh, young sports people, um, so I think um, we all, not only us, uh, all, all, we all will be fine. You, you've spoken a lot about what you did for the players while they were training from home, I'm just wondering, for you as a manager, did you still feel like a manager during that time or did you Feel like your role changed in a, in a way when they were working from home and you went to contact them on Zoom and did your relationship change with them in any way? 
But my role didn't change a lot because usually I watch training. And that's what I did <laughs> this time as well. I decide about what we are doing. And that's what I did there as well. Um, so that's uh, that didn't change. Yeah, but of course, from a, we all realize that it's nice to have these techno uh, technical um, little um, assets to 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 stay in contact. But it's still different. It's still different. And when I speak to my players on a Zoom talk, or if I have them in a room uh, and speak to them, that feels different because it is different. But um, that was not, again, something we couldn't change. So life is always make the best of what you have. And in this moment, it was the best we could do. And that's why we did it. And we didn't think about, yeah, but the other thing would be better. Um, let's come together. Let's hide somewhere. And, and let's do some things together. That was never in our mind. So how is that? It makes no sense to think about things you cannot change. And we didn't do that. We used it. But the longer it took, of course, the more difficult it became. So it was a good moment, actually, when we when we then um, were allowed to train again, even in the small groups. That was already a massive relief for all of us. And so, um, yeah, all good now. Okay, thank you, um, David Lynch. I don't know if I can see you. Do you want to wait? Are you okay? Did you want to ask something? Yeah, didn't you? Yeah, um, Jürgen, you've, you've touched on obviously the increased risk of injury coming back from from that break. Um, I just wonder how useful. Uh, the, the new rule regarding being able to make five subs will be and if that's going to be really in the forefront of your mind when, when games are going on. I did. I did. I don't think I, sp I spoke the, the increased risk. I got a question and answered it. I think it's normal. It's a normal risk, but of course it's always there. Um, yeah, five subs is a necessity. To be honest, I'm 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 really I'm really sure that we, that I'm really happy that that pretty much all. Um, I think agreed on that, um, and it's if you saw now the game I heard in the beginning when when we, when when people spoke about that that then um, maybe bottom clubs said that it will be an advantage for the bigger teams and stuff like this. I didn't see it one second like this, because it's all about the players again that we can come through this period. We will have now two games in three days, then we have an eight-day break, which is not so cool, but not to change, and then we play um, four games in uh, in nine days. Um, and if you cannot make changes then in the games and, and try to, to, to figure out um, who can play, how long, in which moment, I hope we have then the players for that, um, and it would be really, really difficult. So I, I, I like that, oh, that um, the opportunity um, to do so. Um, but of course, um, it's it's just uh, it's oh, it was just necessary, honestly, um, nothing else. And I'm really happy that we all agreed on that. Thanks, David. Um... James Pierce, I'm afraid I can't. Ah, oh, let me see you, James. Do you want to ask me if you're you okay? You yeah, yeah, just just the one. If that's okay. Hi, Jurgen. You okay? Um, Jurgen, you're, you're so close to a historic achievement for the club after that 30-year wait. Over these past three months, were you ever worried you wouldn't get to this point and you would be denied the, the chance to actually win it on the field rather than in in, in another way? <laughs> Honestly, yes. It was the moment when I, I didn't think when we when we went to lockdown, I didn't think about a second that oh my god, and that's in our season and where we where we are so close and stuff. And not for a second, because that's not it was not important in that moment. It, I, I became worried in the moment when people started talking about Nil and Void the season because it was like wow. And I really felt it physically, um, really, um, that it that, that would that would have been really, really, really hard. We don't expect to get it as a present, so we didn't want it have a have one, didn't want to have it on a, a points per game thing. So we were really happy when we when when it was decided that we can play again. But there were moments, you know, how long the discussions were. Um, some people brought it up from time to time um, for different reasons, um, and when that was off the table, I'm, then I was um, I was uh, quite I felt quite re um, relieved and. Um, yeah, now we are here. So if they had would have done the, the the points per game and we couldn't have played, then we probably would have, would have would be now champions. So now we aren't. We have to play for it. That's great. That's how it should be in sports. Uh, and now we, we go for it. So that's it. We don't think in our mind we are already nearly there or whatever. Uh, we know the situation at the table, but we saw City playing. We see all the other teams. We know we, before we, we needed a lot of work to come where we were in this season, but we needed luck as well. That's how it it always is so, and that's what we need again because it will be tough, tougher than toughest the next few weeks. Um, I, I, will, I hope I can enjoy it because that's the plan actually. That the hard work is was never a problem to us, but we need to make sure that we really play again the best football we are able to play, and then we will be fine and we'll see what we and how we 
um, what we have to celebrate and how we um, can celebrate. But these things are only important in a moment when it's then finally happened and um, not before. Okay, guys, last couple now. I think Neil Jones um, is uh, what's up with the other question still going, Neil? Yes? Hi, yeah, you okay? Just, just want to ask about uh, Minamino. I mean, it would be hard for him to adjust in the middle of the season anyway to come to a new club, but obviously to do so in the circumstances that, that he has, has it has it helped him settle in in that, that regard that he's been spending maybe more time speaking to his teammates, or or, or how do you view how do you view that that um, that situation? Oh yes, massively so. So um, it was. Um... <clears throat> Look, new players coming in, and usually it's um, how it is with us, especially that um, you say, oh, come on, the first two, three, four months, we don't really judge. So we ex we don't, but I know the public does. And that means then we have always to explain why it's not like this, why it's not like that, and um, and all these things. Um, and the more time you have, for whatever reason, the better it is. And now we had four weeks, which is, by the way, the longest preseason I ever had with any Liverpool side together. Uh, we were all together over that period. That's a massive difference. Usually we have it all together only one or I think last year it was not even a week when Sadio came back, though, for example. So that was a massive difference. And it hasn't helped. It helped him. It helped um, the young, the kids a lot. Um, uh, Nico, Curtis, um, Harvey, it helped them really. We have we brought even more um, young kids up, Jay Kane and, and Leighton Clarkson. So that's so nice um, to see them and how how much they they get the benefit of the of the way we train and the way the, the other players treat them. So yes, it helped. And Taki, 100. He looks um, he looks really different in the moment than to the first three weeks when he tried to yeah to please everybody and to do everything what we say. And that's in a language where he's not 100% comfortable with and all these things. So that's how it is. So we had now much more time. He had much more time to settle and he settled. Um, and so that's good. And um, yeah, that helped. Okay, final question in the open uh, is uh, Don, who's top left. And then just, just before you start, Don, just a reminder, guys, if you could leave the meeting relatively promptly, that would be helpful for us. Um, I'd like to boot you out of a virtual meeting. That helps. Quickly, if that's okay. Don, final question for the press conference. Okay, cheers. Hi, Jorgen. Um, yeah, obviously, it's been great to see the Premier League supporting the Black Lives Matter movement. We spoke about that earlier. It's been a really real positive this week. There are, of course, some people who would criticise this and say you should stick to football and keep politics out of football. You're a person who has you know, made their positions known on certain social and political issues. Um, I just wondered if you could explain why, why you think it's important that sports people when they can do take a stand and how people like yourself and the footballers can have a positive impact but that's not for me it's a, the, the, this thing is not a political thing it is a, a, a political problem it's a society problem so and we are all part of the society so we should we should have an opinion at least and um, if you have an opinion you can speak about it it's a politics not sports and politics should not um, um, be together or stuff like this that's something i I agree of kind of, but not 100 percent sure. That depends to the to the to the to the subject, I would say. But this is absolutely a society thing. And um, it's all about that we have to show finally and hopefully the last time everybody that you that we we are all the same. It's it's just so unbelievable that we still that we talk about it, but we talk, have to talk about it because things happen still. And it's not and uh, we I heard the discussions about um um, um, black managers or, or BME managers and stuff like this, and in all in all parts of life, in all leading roles, why, why should they make? Why should anybody make a, a, a difference between between two guys because of a, a, a one thing which is absolutely has not is absolutely not influential? I will never never understand it. I have never understood it. But it's about in this moment making a clear stance from all of us. That there are maybe some idiots, but there are not as many as we think. And if if they are if they are um, not that powerful as we hopefully uh, as it is hopefully, then we can change the world. Actually, absolutely, and I hope we do that now. Okay, guys, thank you very much. If you say that, thank you. Oh, bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. See you again. Bye. Tuesday. We'll